things going at Arprat's opening night? Uh, it's amazing. Tons of people, all the work is working, everybody's excited, and uh, the artists are talking to hundreds of people, and kids are running around and smiling, and so it's really great. Uh, well, we started a few years ago. We've done maybe eight events now uh, in different cities, and the idea is just to show people all the, 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 the incredible diversity that comes when artists start thinking about art and conceptual ideas, but they combine it with robotics. And robotics itself raises all sorts of interesting questions. So I think when you combine the kinds of things that art makes you think about and the kinds of things that robotic and technology makes you think about, you get this really fertile, uh, just interesting, endlessly varied uh, world, and it's great. So Momo, this is Momo without the cushy, furry stuff around it. Uh, and it's a haptic navigational device. So what it does is it leans in the direction that you need to go. As sort of a baseline concept, we wanted to get away, we wanted to work within navigation, but get away from using maps or arrows or text. We wanted to just work with physical feedback. So these two motors give it its waist movement, and the GPS unit tells it where it is in the world, and the compass tells it which way it's facing, and then all together it figures out, this is the way I need to point, or this is the way I need to point. So this is obviously Hexpod. Um, it's a Hexpod robot that uh, has had a head attached to it with a camera in there. And uh, the camera's looking for faces, so there's two computers running here. One of them's looking after the locomotion of the Hexpod, or the leg movement and what have you. And a second camera, um, sorry, a second computer is rigged to the camera, a bit more like a laptop. And that's looking for faces in the crowd. And when it finds a face, it locks onto it, and tells the, uh, the locomotion computer where to go, what to do, and who to look at. So it's just a pure creative engineering fun thing to do, you know. There's no other reason other than to take two bits of technology and put them together and see what happens. Well, essentially, it's a video game that people can play on the internet all around the world. And when they connect, they play the game, and when they kill each other, it creates a physical representation of that kill by dripping the fake blood. Uh, it's been very positive reaction as far as the uh, gallery viewers, but a lot of video game players uh, don't really appreciate it and they have a lot of negative criticism for it. But really it's just because they think that it's an attack on the video game, but really it's just about spurring conversation about whether or not video game or virtual reality, whether it has presence in the real world. Artbots is just the most amazing thing because it, it's, it brings together this really bizarre collective of people who are obsessed with robots that make art and art robotics from all around the world. And, and I suppose the Science Gallery is all about you know, bringing together ideas from different spaces and, and seeing what happens when they collide. And art and robotics is a perfect example of that. And uh, you know, we've got an, a robot that's that does origami, we've got uh, robots that are using feedback mechanisms and you know, we had an amazing theremin performance by Ray Lee tonight which was just extraordinary. This is Hart. He's a, he's a puppet basically that's got some very simple robotic reflexes. So uh, basically he's a, he's a puppet cyborg. And we're playing with where the, the boundary between um, puppetry and robotics lies. Yeah, so he's got some very simple reflexes. He's got motion sensors in his head and his body. Um, he's got uh, touch sensors on his hands. And depending on how you, he knows how he's been handled and how he's been moved. So, um, and he's got a little heart. I don't know if you can see it, it's quite dark, but that beats, beats in and out there. What I made for Art Bus is a sculpture that's based on a phototropic plant that has a circadian rhythm. And so uh, it actually will remember what its circadian rhythm was from the day before. So um, 
in darkness, the plant will lift its leaves. And so I have this sensor that's scanning the plant to determine if it's lifted its leaves. And if it sees its leaves um, lifting, then it turns its light on. And at that point, it um, shuts the light that is opposite to it. So what ends up happening over time, over a 24-hour day, is that each plant has its um, uh, full cycle. Uh, and you see this kind of rotation occur in the sculpture. Well, I actually feel that my piece is so self-explanatory. There is not much to um, explain. Plus, um, I kind of like people to uh, decide for themselves what they're looking at. Everybody seems to love it. Um, I mean, the the robot at the beginning, at the entry, the Rubik's Cube, that does seem to catch people's imagination. And the other piece that I see that's getting a huge amount of attention is the, um, the blood. Yeah, I really like the, that one which is upstairs, which, where you have the console and the video game where you're killing people and then it's, the computer is connected to the, to the blood. I quite like the computer one and my son loves this one. Not surprising, I imagine, for the children. And I have this huge The netted one was very, very cute. I think that one's my favourite probably one. Yeah. <laughs> Mine was the spider, you know, the IC robot, what is it? Oh, the face recognition, that's pretty cool. They're, I like them all, really, really. I, I, I could say some work, but it's not true. I, I like it all, I like them all. I'm enjoying the whole, the whole show.